Hi, I'm Alicia. And I'm Hayley. We're about to set off around Australia in our two-seat aircraft that we built. Our plan is to travel to as many places as we can in every state and territory and experience as much as we can of what this country has to offer. Come along and join us on our Australian adventure. On the last episode of our Australian adventure, we explored Cobar, which is a working mining town. We then headed to our next destination, the opal mining town of White Cliffs, where we spent a night in an underground motel. The next leg of our journey takes us from White Cliffs to Broken Hill, which is about a 35 minute flight. The Royal Flying Doctors base is located at the Broken Hill Airport and they provide a tour of the facility so we thought we'd better have a look. So Broken Hill here, this is the inland map of the area, our base covers, that's bigger than England and Wales with a population of around 13,000. The Royal Flying Doctors provide a free aeromedical service to anyone living, working or travelling in the bush. They are a lifeline to remote Australians and so many people owe their lives to the service that they offer. So they're Beechcraft Super King Airs, capable of carrying two stretcher patients and three seated. And they fly at around 500 kilometres per hour. And we ask the folk to do roo runs in their motor cars up and down just before they land. Right away the kangaroos and emus etc. They once landed at Tipperborough at night, it was raining. Part of it up, and as a kangaroo had hopped across, so down went the nose wheel. But anyway, it doesn't happen very much, only about six times in the 20 odd years I've been here, so they're pretty vigilant out there. And of course inside's like a mini intensive care unit. They have their own power and oxygen. It's a stretcher lifting device, huge medical kit. Babies have been born on board, so they have to be ready for anything at any time. It all happens out there. The service receives some funding from the government, but relies heavily on donations. If you'd like to support the work of the Royal Flying Doctors, click on the link below. Once we finished in the museum, we headed into the town of Broken Hill. That's a seven kilometre ride. We turned up at the caravan park. The only place that the caravan park had for us to pitch the tent on was on wood chips. We found this to be a pretty common thing as we travelled around the outback. We woke the following morning to another hot day and went into town to see what there was to see in Broken Hill. We found monuments to the Syndicate of Seven, who were the uh, founding fathers of the company that we now know as a mining giant, BHP. We started here at Broken Hill as a Broken Hill proprietary. For some of these men, the mine made them huge fortunes, but for others, they went out poorer than what they went in. You can read more about the Syndicate of Seven in the link below. We met up with John along the way and he showed us around Broken Hill some of the sites. John is um, second or third generation uh, from Broken Hill and an engineer in the mines, so he had a fair bit to share about what happens in Broken Hill. There's two ways of mining, so this one here, this showed the underground mining, like these are all shafts going down to get to the deep parts. Yeah. But in the, see, see up here, it's got here original open cut. Yep. So that's where they That's actually, all it was. So yeah, that's what they did from the top. But when you do open cut, because it's so narrow, the deeper you go, you work on roughly a 45 degree angle. So you, if, even if it's that wide, you know, you still got to take that much to, to make it safe. Yeah. You know, so, so it's that extra, like the mullet that you'd have to take to make it safe that ends up in the dumps like yep. that. Yeah. Years ago, we went over to Sydney and there was this museum 
near the rocks, I think they call it, uh, quite close to Sydney Harbour Bridge. And there were these two massive cabinets of, of minerals. So one of them was minerals of the world, and when I say massive cabinets, probably at least as long as from here to the end there, and you know, quite high. Yeah. And then there was another one the same size, minerals of Broken Hill. Go figure. John took us up to see the line of load, which is the memorial for the miners who have died in Broken Hill. There's about 800 names on this wall. John told the story of a fellow that he used to work alongside of who died some three weeks after they'd swapped places in the mine doing the same sort of task. The thing you weren't allowed to do was to go onto that rill of dirt if you could actually see up into the hole mm. because the risk was that if a big stone fell in there it could come and, and squash you or cause problems. You know, that's exactly what happened to him. He went into this job when the, um, the dirt, when you could actually see up into the, the stone and a big stone came down. And, and killed him, whether it was the stone itself or whether it was the compression of the air that came from the stone. But the sad thing, the sobering thing for me, is that he succeeded me in a job. I was doing exactly that same job about three weeks earlier. Yeah. In exactly the same location, taking exactly the same risks. And, and went out when you shouldn't. And have. I was doing what I shouldn't have. Yeah. But I got out of it all right. Yeah. And three weeks later, didn't. Yeah. So that's a bit sobering. Yeah. Tragically there are many risks associated with mining and something the community has to live with is loved ones that have been lost as a result of the mine. While safety has improved today, accidents do still happen. A lot of this day like Newcastle or out the Hunter Valley anyway, you don't see this. But no. this is what's going on. Yeah. Um, because it's all well hidden from the road. Yeah, you fly over everything. The top of it. Oh, you can see it. We can't. Oh, you can't everywhere. believe what you can see flying over the top. We were also told about the story of Australian government to move all Australian gold reserves out to Broken Hill, and John earlier on told us. I think it was his father told him that he can remember seeing these trucks pulling into town that were loaded up, and there was quite a bit of secrecy about it. The trucks were actually transporting Australia's gold reserves into Broken Hill where it was stored in the jail during World War II. Our tour with John was one of our favourite parts of our time in Broken Hill. Thanks John for sharing your wealth of knowledge with us. We've just had our second night at um, Broken Hill. We've uh, had a pretty average night's sleep last night. Um, it was stinking hot so neither of us could go to sleep but Hayden's airbed's gone down, so that would have been really nice for him. Um, so I'm off to the pool to see if we can fix it. Um, I found the hole okay. around this bit here. Bad news is it's not repairable because it's the air leaking out of that bit in there. What time was it? Okay. The forecast was for a 42 degree temperature day. So we thought we'd go and hire a car and go and have a look at the little mining town of Silverton. After the sweltering heat from the past two days, we couldn't wait to sit in some air conditioned comfort. We're already up to 40 degrees. The forecast was for a maximum of 42. Silverton may be most famous for the part it played in the Mad Max 2 film. This is where a lot of the scenes were shot in the desert sort of settings that they've used in the movie. The first building that you come across in Silverton is the Silverton Jail and Historical Museum. It has all sorts of different bits and pieces in it, not just mining, but um, outfits that they wore from you know, years gone by, different um, mining equipment, all sorts of historical st stuff, not just specifically to Silverton or Broken Hill. There's a wide range of 
things. Only a few dollars to go in there, and it's well worth the visit. So much to see. We continued exploring, and the temperatures continued to rise. Next stop was for some lunch, and some friends had recommended a little cafe a few blocks back off the main road. We are at a little cafe next to the Mad Max Museum and we're eating Hondong pie by, with some Hondong ice cream. Hondong is a native tree that's got this weird looking fruit on it um, and it's only got this little skin of flesh and they take the flesh off and they make pie, sauces, jams, all sorts of things. Um, it's pretty good. Um, the locals liken it to apricots, maybe just a little bit more tart. I don't know how to describe what it tastes like, but it's good. And here it is, the world of Mad Max 2. As there was some issue with copyright and licensing, we were unable to film inside the museum, but we were allowed to outside. You can see some of the vehicles and machinery they used in the film, and some of the props. After spending most of the day exploring Silverton, we headed back past the 39 dips, uh, back to Broken Hill. Next stop, Bell's Milk Bar, which is famous for its original 1950s decor and old style milkshakes and soda spiders. We ran into a friend from home and thought we'd best catch up for a milkshake. Hayden and I turn up to Broken Hill and randomly run into our friend from Newcastle, right. <laughs> who happens to be a filmmaker. Uh, and I, I live in Wilcannia. You live in Wilcannia? Wilcannia's greatest filmmaker. So, <laughs> so, um, Jared? Yes. Yeah, I know. I'm very uncomfortable <laughs> sitting in front of you. I don't know what to do. What, what, I'm bring, sweaty. what, what, what brings you to Will Kenya? Oh, I teach in the school at Will Kenya. Yeah? Yes. Why are you teaching in the school? I needed some work. Okay. F filming was a little <laughs> it slow. Up, yes. A little slow. Like the, at the, at the, like the lakes out of Menindi. Yep. <laughs> nice to see you guys. Likewise. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Yeah, probably so. Closer to Newcastle than yeah. the middle of Australia. As the afternoon got later, it just kept on getting hotter. Our next stop was the Desert Sculptures, which is a fairly new attraction to Broken Hill, and it's a great place to go for sunset. It's a pretty cool place to check out, but given the cost of the park's entrance fees, we didn't think it was all that amazing. We took a few photos and headed back to town. Seeing one of our airbeds was broken and we were wanting to leave early the next morning, we booked in at the Aero Club's accommodation, which had air conditioning, so we were cheering. Hen, what are you doing? Stopping at the engine lock in the last three flights. Make sure it's all going alright. And how is it going? That's looking alright. I'd like it to run a little bit cooler. We woke up the following morning and checked the weather forecast. The flight was only going to be about 55 minutes through to Wolpena Pound. The sky was starting to look pretty cranky though and on our forecast the overview had about 9 or 10 lines which usually means that there's a fair bit of a fair bit of weather forecasts. We refueled and packed the aeroplane hoping that the weather might clear at some point today.
South Australia to see Will Paint a Pound in the Flinders Ranges. Leaving Broken Hill we flew over Silverton to get a few photos. And you'll see in the photo here just the scattered buildings around the town. coming from. Oh, in that sort of line where you can see those clouds there. Ah, so straight out there. And the weather forecast this morning had a um, trough that was passing through and you'll see as we're flying through here that it was sort of dissipating and there it was higher up and so we were able to sneak through with no worries. There's a few bits of rain showers around but it cleared up once we got further west and turned into a reasonable day. So we might get a clear run after all? Maybe, we're 45 minutes out now. Okay. What's our total flight time? Uh, about an hour, a bit under an hour and 10 minutes. Okay. We're on about 130 knots, which is got about um, Actually, 20 knots headwind. It's slowing us up a bit, otherwise it should have been about 55 minutes. What was the wind like down lower? Same? Oh, it was a bit stronger down lower. Oh, okay. About 30, 30, 35 knots. Okay, Mike, Sylvia, Mike, 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 Any reason we can't go higher? Yeah, because the wind... Just a bit Mike, radio check. Wind, really? The wind? Okay. The wind would be stronger up there. I just picked this height because... It looks like the wind's a little bit um, calmer. Okay. Might just get you to grab on that just in case it's, it's a bit bumpy. The temperature dropping, we're around um, 26 degrees when we left. 26 degrees when we left? Yep. It felt hotter than that. Uh, when we're up high, about 2,500 oh. feet. Okay. We're down to 21 degrees. Yep. The um, full pattern on the land. Probably another strip down there. Uh, it's got a. Is that three runways or just two? Okay. Is that one on the map? Yeah, this one there. Ah, The farms are that big that the farmers have to fly out to check their stations. There may not be anyone living down there. There's a house right at the end of the track. Oh, yeah. There's another strip out to the left. Oh, yeah. These are the size ones, they're everywhere. So, that 
Don't be clear of rangers on the horizon. I think it must be starting to come up, you see on the map here. On the, um, yeah, it should drone. be, really. Definitely they cut off the point. If we had the time, right now, could we do a fly around the Flinders Rangers or? Yep. I'm just a little pound pound, I mean further. Or just a pound. And then on the way back we might go a little bit further west of track and follow the rangers down yeah, okay. on the way down to Port Augusta. Yeah, so we passed that trough that was of concern. Well it was meant to be about here, the skies were a bit clear on the other side. So. The worst of it was that, that section out there. Oh, it's more up, yeah, more north. The side was clear ahead over the rangers. So. On the next episode of our Australian Adventure, we fly over the most spectacular landscape we've ever seen from the air as we loop the Wilpena Pound. We check out some of the bushwalking trucks around Ronsley Park Station and then head to Clare.